Hey, aloha, and welcome back to the FinTech Hawaii Studios. I'm Andrew, the security guy, and with another episode of Security Matters Hawaii. We are streaming live today. We've got Colin Fair on the line. He's remote. I wish he was back in Hawaii with me, but he's in Austin, Texas. Uh, he works for Night Security Systems. Now, Colin, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here, Andrew. Thank you for having me. No worries, man. I know you're a busy guy over there. Um, so this is like a post-ISC West episode, man. I mean, I got my brain strained up there last week, so I hope you can kind of carry the show today because I'm still like, wah, wah, wah. So you know how those shows are, right? It's ridiculous. Yes. Um, I tell you what, let's start by um, going ahead and uh, giving, let's give our audience a little bit of uh, sort of your history, as much as you kind of want to share uh, about, you, you know, your development in the industry and uh, how you ended up, you know, where you're at today. Fantastic. Yeah, so uh, going through college and everything else, I need to make some spare money in <laughs> doing so. Someone said, hey, there's a contract company to do um, high-speed internet through Time Warner. So I started being that uh, cable technician with them um, late uh, 1990s. And then after that, uh, I kind of spun into security industry, uh, started uh, working within the field, moved into uh, supervisor uh, overseeing projects from supervisor to project management to uh, program engineering to a senior project manager. And as I kept on developing within the career path, uh, I think you've said it best, uh, no one really goes to school or have the uh, fortune to actually want to go into the security, just kind of fall into it. Uh, but once when I had got into the security field, I just started loving what I did. Uh, and that drove my passion for learning more about the products and learning more about how to best uh, implement, utilize, and actually uh, make sure that there's a seamless system that we provide for the clients. Uh, so from programming to project management uh, to uh, service, uh, sort of being a service manager, then moved into operations uh, management. And then now, here I'm currently at uh, for an account executive uh, doing sales, making sure that really understanding what the customer needs, so therefore our team can actually implement it. Wow, so now that's different. So let me ask you a question, because Time Warner did some security stuff in different parts of the country years ago. Did you touch on security when you were also doing cable installs? Because that's a there was always that triple play, you know, video, uh, internet and security sort of offering, or TV, I guess, was actually the triple play or audio. But did were they doing security for you back then, or was that just more like a landing cable and the cable modem and internet type installation? It was a ladder. It's actually doing the uh, high speed internet only. Uh, so this is uh, the first uh, breakthrough of high speed internet. Oh. Uh, prior to the cable modem for high speed internet, uh, we're utilizing. Um, directional antennas, uh, transceivers with on the roofs of houses, which I did a little bit of work uh, with Sprint for that. And then Time Warner came in and said, hey, we can actually, we already have uh, cabling and lines directly to your house. So let's go ahead and utilize a cable infrastructure for piping in high-speed internet. And then I think about five years later, that's when the security came into play. Oh, that's awesome. So. Um, so you mentioned service and ops. You've had a, sort of one of those broad-ranging, um, you know, hi, uh, ex history experiences in our industry. Um, uh, and and I, I know you said you did some service, but then in, in operations, did you get, um, did companies give you like sort of training for ops? I know there's a, a CSPM, or was it more like, hey, you know what you're doing, so you can handle operations, or how how'd that sort of work? Because it does, many things, as you mentioned, fall to us in the industry. You know, they're like, oh, here, Try this hat, you know, and if you're good at it, then you, you get that hat and another one usually. Uh, very good question. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't really get uh, per se um, direct training. Uh, I kind of have to go out there and actually find out what works, uh, what worked for myself, uh, utilizing school for uh, trying to further my career. And then, in addition to that, actually looking at PMP classes, uh, looking wow. at this uh, coursework. And uh, in addition to that, uh, just more or less uh, having a uh, working with peers or having a mentor to really guide me and help me. And then as well, support for my uh, team and colleagues, uh, make sure that we're effectively communicating. So therefore, we know what's what's happening and how to how to 
move forward uh, within any kind of new position or new uh, role that you take on. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned communication, which is a big thing. I, I see such a, I, I should say, but I think we've had this, I think those of us who knew well that communication was a big part of how to do this, because we, in our industry, have to interpret sort of what the customer wants, which they don't always know what they need to accomplish that, but what is it that they want to get done and then, you know, we have to interpret that technically out to the ops team to deliver it, right? So there's a, that role in the middle. And now you've, you've sort of gone from that operational delivery side, which I think is sort of the bigger side of the funnel. And you've come up into what some would call the dark side of sales. So tell me how that, tell me how that transition uh, for you, um, were you, were you always interested in getting up? Or did you just see that as a natural extension of that same explanation that you've always done? Uh so yeah, I was always interested in uh, sales. I I worked closely with our sales team and always uh, talked to a lot of people, saying that every day everyone's selling. Uh, if you have a friend, you've already sold yourself. You, you sold your abilities to make a friendship, make a connection, and actually move that uh, that into a, a next level of someone actually likes me. <laughs> and so if you could do that, then I believe you can truly be a salesperson. Uh, and then after that, uh, I was um, always challenged with uh, salespeople uh, new into the industry and everything else. Mm. Uh, had a vision of what they wanted to sell, but not a vision of what the customer really needed wow. or what uh, would complement them and their business. And so I really uh, homed into that and wanted to do better for our customers and make sure that what they the solution that we're providing was truly what their vision was at the end of the day. Mm. That's excellent. I um, I know that, and you also mentioned, you know, a little bit that of that's done for mentorship. A little bit of it's done on the job. I do think it's interesting that um, sometimes people newer to our industry and that are involved with sales or, or or you know business capture don't I think spend the time and and it's a lot to learn. In all fairness to them, you know, they don't seem to devote a lot of time to understanding the what of our industry is because you know we're very applied and that the features and benefits that are going to create that solution that that customer wanted is, is takes time to learn. Um, give, me, give me your take on that as, as you've, you've gone through experience and been with you know, different companies in different parts of the country. Um, how, much, how much of this do you think needs to be done on the job? I, I ask because I'm involved with some workforce development programs on behalf of SIA and as is, and everyone's interested in what does it take for us to build this industry professionally so maybe give me your give me your thoughts on what you've seen and what do you think might help there. Uh, definitely, just from my uh, personal experience, uh, trust me, this is nothing uh, set in stone or anything. I think uh, every company and every individual has a different way to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, some people we've had fresh out of college and we've uh, kind of took them as an intern uh, project and really taught them the security industry. And within six months to the year, they're actually up and running. However, it definitely makes uh, it takes a company to really uh, invest into their employees to really teach them uh, what the company is expected out of them, uh, learn about their products, uh, and as well is how to sell and actually how to listen at the end of the day. Uh, a salesperson or anyone I should feel that should actually listen. Uh, three times as much as what uh, they're speaking. So therefore, listen to the customer, listen to what they're asking. And then as well, uh, don't worry about if you don't have the answers, take the information down, jot it, uh, and then come back and let the customer know what, um, what the answer is. So have a playbook, uh, have mentorships, and know that uh, it's going to be a a rough ride at the beginning for anyone new. Uh, however, uh, make sure that you have a program and you check in with them constantly. And then as well, uh, ask them what they need and provide the direction that, that, that they need. Yeah, I, um, it, it's interesting you say that. I, we, um, we've been or benefited from a lot of folks who've come up, you know, that started as basic installers and then worked their way up to like system engineering and pre-sale system engineering and then into ops management. Um, one of our, our current operations manager it was you know started that way, and he's basically driving all of operations at this point. Um, and you mentioned a, a thing that I think a lot of 
a lot of ownership maybe doesn't doesn't pay enough attention to, um, and that's investment. Um, I I agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, a year a year or two perhaps is required to just to get your arms around. You know, you've got the access control information and learning, and then you've got the video surveillance learning. You've got the you know a lot of people might think intrusion simple. Intrusion can be one of the more complex sort of pieces of our business, and then you know you've got intercom and communications and mass com and even in fire if you get into fire. I don't know if you guys do fire, but um, what do you think, how long before you really felt you were sort of like a, a master installer, you know, did you, you were out there in the field and you, you just, you, they could throw you anything because, you know, they, here's the manual, man, figure it out, you know, and like that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I believe uh, uh, this me report, right? Uh, anyways, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've never been a master installer, never in my <laughs> life. So I uh, fake it until until I make it, yeah. or until I have that knowledge. And I think anyone uh, trying to uh, accomplish uh, anything in life, uh, it's never you never accomplish it. You always get to uh, where you feel very confident in it. Uh, mm -hmm. But with the security industry and everything else, the technology changes on a daily basis. So just because I know how to install a reader or knew how to do one thing, it doesn't mean that the next deployment, it's going to be at the same thing. So definitely uh, always looking at the manuals and finding out what's different about this product from the last uh, uh, built or revision of whenever it was out. So never been 100% uh, on my installation skills or game, but nevertheless, I continue to try and continue to pass on that knowledge of what we received together uh, to the greater good. Yeah, I, I often wonder if it's, um, if, if people know when they get in, I think people walk around and they see security stuff on the walls, they see a camera, but they, they really just may not know everything that went into the, how it arrived there and what its field of view is and all that kind of stuff. Um, dude, um, are you familiar with any sort of, you know, training manuals or, or any, do you guys have a program there at night? And we will talk about night some more. Um, uh, of, like for, you know, an installation standards guide, you know, sales standards guides, uh, that, that kind of stuff. Um, or, or, or is it, um, do you rely on just the internal information of the firm? Uh, no, we actually have a great uh, process and procedures within place. Mm -hmm. So with any, any uh, role that you actually have, we have a great playbook. Uh, wow for awesome. our sales team, for operations, for service. So therefore we make sure that uh, we're train, uh, training our, our employees for delivery of what we're, our expectations are, uh, and then as well what our core values are. Um, and as well, it's just not with the uh, company, uh, the flag that we're carrying for the company, but it's also the product uh, that we represent as well. Mm. Yeah, I love that, that playbook idea. I think it's really critical for someone to understand you know, what information it is they have to bring to hand to the next part of the team. Um, how, how do you view the, the, do you have, um, like, do you have marketing and then sales and then, you know, a, a, an engineering group and then a deployment group or what's sort of your, your, your handoffs, you might say, for, for a project from, you know, the time someone calls in to the time something goes and gets delivered and then, you know, QC'd and commissioned at the end? Uh, good question. So actually, uh, Knight actually prides themselves on uh, the Knight Roundtable, and it's to make sure that the customer is uh, carried throughout the whole process. So uh, the sales executive, we actually go out and we meet with the customer, get to understand what they're talking about, uh, really dive into deep questions. So therefore, we can make sure that we understand uh, their company goals, their employees' goals, their personal goals, and then as well as how that complements within their environment. Uh, once when we get that information, we actually take that to a design team mm. who actually uh, creates that solution for us. They create the bill of materials, scope of work, and everything from the information that we work uh, hand in hand together with. Uh, make sure that we capture everything that the customer wants, and as well, it's uh, done through a design engineering solution. Uh, once, whenever we execute the project and everything else, we have a dedicated operations team that's uh, there within the project. Uh, make sure that everything goes seamlessly uh, throughout the course of the project. Uh, and then after that, it gets turned over to our service department that is dedicated just for uh, making sure the customer has uh, a representative 
on standby in case that they ever have an issue. That is awesome. So nice security. Sounds like they got it dialed in. We're going to take a break and pay some bills. We're going to be back in about one minute with Colin Fair of Night Security Systems. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. We're talking with Colin Fair of Night Security Systems. Colin, thanks again for being here today. Um, Want to get into night nice security now. You guys are well known in the industry. You're pretty big. Is your footprint in, outside of Texas or is it Texas based? Give us a, give us a sense of how, how large the operations are there and um, sort of the markets that you guys work in or the markets that you specialize in. Fantastic. Yeah, so Knight, uh, we're definitely a, a Texas-based company. Okay. Uh, however, we are a national company and going global. Uh, we have a lot of customers that are just driving us to expand further and further. Uh, right now, we have uh, offices within Dallas, Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. Wow. Uh, a lot of satellite offices throughout the state of Texas as well. Uh, but then we have great connect partners uh, through PSA and other channels uh, that we work closely with uh, outside of Texas. And as well, we complement their services and business within Texas. So therefore, uh, if you're looking for a partner in Texas, definitely give us a shout. <laughs> nice. Uh, do you specialize? You got, do you guys do just surveillance, access, video? What all, what all services do you provide? Uh, primarily, we're... Uh, a security company. Uh, however, we also do, uh, we have our FAL, uh, so oh. we do uh, work on fire systems, but our our main specialty is uh, security. Access control, intrusion, intercoms, uh, 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 fence detection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in, in Texas is like huge. So I, I've been, obviously, I've been to Dallas and Houston and San Antonio, and I mean, every market possible is probably there. Um, do you guys work like in the muni government, DOD, and commercial, you know, banking, all that? Or where do you, where do you, I guess, where are you, are you have, do you have a sector that's heavier for you or are you across all sectors equally or how's that going down there? Uh, we're definitely across all sectors uh, equally, I would say. Uh, so, yeah, we, we deal, uh, deal with a lot of different verticals, whether it's uh, higher ed, K through 12, a lot of state work. Uh, kind of like IST, uh, we have an 8A, so therefore we're working oh. with a lot of, or we're trying to get into uh, federal contracts. Um, so, I mean, we have just a vast array of our offerings as well, customers that we're working with. Um, and we're always looking for uh, anyone that's looking to uh, have a great security uh, partnership. Mm. Always uh, looking to make sure that we have a mutual fit for each other. Wow, yeah. And you mentioned the PSA Security Network, which, you know, Christine, my wife, is on the board of PSA. We're, you know, longtime PSA members. That's, that's been great, that national deployment program. Um, and you mentioned maybe going global. So do you have some other partners that can help um, take the uh, operation that you're doing for some of your clients outside of the, the continental United States? That's awesome. Yeah, so mainly we're actually working with a lot of the manufacturers. So therefore, 
working close with them on who they prefer uh, whenever we have uh, the opportunities outside the continental U uh, United States. So therefore, we make sure that uh, not only that they're recommended by just one person, we properly vet them out. Uh, we love to have a face to face with them and make sure that their facilities up to standards and that uh, we trust uh, them within the customer and as well uh, to make sure that they're going to execute for our our offerings that we're uh, providing our customer. Yeah, I think that that um, that same level of assurance we get from PSA, where we can kind of talk, you know, owner to owner, and always have that comfort that you know when we're sharing a project, you know, on behalf of a customer who has you know offices or operations in a place where you know we're not present, I can offer a firm and know that that president from on down will treat that customer, you know, the same way that we would here. And that brings us a whole lot of comfort. Um, do, you, uh, do you have an, a, an idea of how much of that sort of partnering business you guys have going on, at, you know, on a percentage basis? Is it a third or a half or 5% or, or um, you know, in your experience anyway? I know you've been doing sales there for a while. Yeah, so I'd say right now it's about 5%. Uh, every day it's growing. Uh, wow. I, I just now heard of a booking then. Right when I was uh, leaving the office this afternoon, uh, another huge deployment that we're going to be doing. Uh, so every day we're picking up uh, new customers, and customers are looking for uh, the service uh, service that we actually provide at the end of the day. Because it's one thing to stand up a system, but it's a second thing to go back and actually service it and make sure that these uh, these systems that we deploy, uh, let's face it, they're not cheap and that they need to continue to have service, and they also need to be monitored to make sure that uh, whenever you need them, they're there. Because within security, there's never a second chance. Yeah, lifecycle management is a piece of, of business that I think um, a lot of, I've run into situations where systems have just been sort of installed and then left abandoned. There was no service program or service plan offered by the, the integrator. And, you know, we end up, you know, that you find a system that's not been patched for years. So that, that service component's huge. Um, so uh, I can understand that you guys have carved out a niche in service, which I, I think is critical. Um, what other sort of things do you think the industry is missing, or in your experience, do you run across that um, our industry is not doing that it needs to be doing? You know, life cycle management, I think, being number one. Um, you know, but what, what, what kind of, uh, you know, because the industry is growing and changing. So what, in, in your estimation, what do you think some of the, the challenges we have are um, today, like for legacy equipment and then, you know, going forward in the future? I'd say that the biggest thing is uh, a lot of customers actually think that they just now purchase uh, this phenomenal system. Uh, so they think that the system is self-healing or that it's going to let them know whenever they have an issue and that it's going to be easily resolved. I mean, it's kind of like your PC. You get a PC and what, I already have uh, a bug on it. There's something that's wrong. Uh, at the end of the day, we're dealing with electronics, so therefore it's critical that uh, our industry need to know that we need to make alerts and we need to make people aware uh, that we have a system failure or a potential to fail. Uh, so therefore, we can take corrective actions before it becomes a critical, um, a critical issue for that customer. We need to make sure that at the end of the day, the products, and, uh, products that we uh, provided and that we're, uh, that we're servicing are always working or that we at least know that whenever they're soon to fail, so therefore we can actually uh, make sure that we get them working in a timely, timely manner. Yeah, and, and I think, um, you know, there's been some new tools that rolled out recently for at least monitoring SNMP and some of these things. You know, we've, we get a lot of systems that have to be offline from the LAN, right? So they're not, they're not exposed to the internet, which is kind of good, but it also creates some other issues that we need to do for monitoring. So I can appreciate that, um, you know, you keep your customers uh, you know, system health in mind, because the last thing they want is when they've had an incident is to find out something wasn't working. We've also, I think, been through that experience. Um, in, the, um, in the, you know, looking forward, um, are you guys getting much, much concern for the, like the cyber hygiene or cyber assurance of your systems? Are you seeing any um, requirements from your customer at certain industries for a higher level of cyber assurance uh, related to the system, either the products you're putting in or even for your own uh, your company, um, you know, how you guys are certified or the cyber hygiene of your firm. For instance, in the federal, we have the NIST 800-171. Uh, I don't know if you're starting to run up against people asking 
like for your system security plan associated with that or, or things like that. We're seeing it contractually on like healthcare and financial sector. And then from the federal government, we're seeing, you know, compliance, uh, you know, type requests. How, how's that going? Or, or is, is, that a, is that a big thing in Texas yet? I just don't know. No, it definitely is. Uh, and I think anyone that has any uh, compliances that they have to abide by, uh, that's the number one question is how, how are, uh, how the technology that we uh, utilize, how is it, uh, how does it work within their appliance standards? Uh, and those are one of those things that asking the right questions and continue drilling into those questions to find out uh, really what kind of compliances that they have. And then as well uh, within the network side and uh, make sure that uh, our systems that we're deploying uh, can actually run on their network and that we're not going to have any blockage uh, or that the technicians and the systems are actually going to work from one location to the next. Uh, to make sure that uh, we don't have any interruptions within the ultimate solution that we're providing. Awesome. We've got about a minute left, Colin. Give us uh, maybe, give our audience some final advice, maybe uh, maybe Knight's tagline, whatever, whatever uh, a PLC, whatever you want to share in our last minute, and then we'll close <laughs> up. Fantastic. Uh, I'll just say that if you are looking for a phenomenal uh, company that actually uh, looks at your system health and monitoring, think about night security. Uh, one of the main things that we do is uh, we look at uh, our system health. Uh, we have our uh, night sentry that does nothing but health monitoring. So it's a 24 seven uh, sock that monitors any potential threats or failures of your system. And we're notified before that threat becomes imminent. And we're actually able to resolve, uh, uh, remote in, resolve it. If not, uh, if it's within our coverage area, within the greater state of Texas, we'll be out there the same day. Uh, if it's caught in before uh, lunchtime, if not, we'll be out there the following mo morning. And if it's out, if it's past noon. Uh, however, nevertheless, we're expanding across the United States. So definitely think of us and let us know how we can support and help you. Awesome. Thanks so much. Colin Fair with Night Security. If you're going to put a system in, people, monitor it because security matters. Thank you. Aloha.